The best entertainment for your weekend. Listen at ridgeradio.co.uk or the TuneIn Radio app. This is Sunday Night Live with Dan and Alex. And Alex, we've got a big guest on the show right now. Yes, we do indeed. Well, everyone knows that we love Christmas here on this show. And a key part of the festive season is watching Christmas movies. I have my favourites, Santa Claus the Movie, Bernard and the Genie, and of course, It's a Wonderful Life. But I've watched them all so many times, they're beginning to wear a bit thin and i've been looking around for something new well my quest is over as a brand new brilliant christmas film has just been released today and it is called lost at christmas the man behind the magic is ryan hendrick and ryan is a multi-award winning and bafta nominated film director and actor uh, ryan's essential focus and objectives are to change the gameplay in scottish film industry and create a broad set of feature films in all genres is designed for theatrical cinema release with a general and universal appeal. Uh, Ryan's first feature film is Lost at Christmas, out in cinemas across the UK today and available to download from tomorrow. Starring Natalie Clark, Kenny Boyle, Sylvester McCoy, uh, Fraser Hines, Caitlin Blackwood and Claire Grogan. Ryan, hello, good evening and welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It is an honour. Now, Ryan, we've known each other for quite a few years now. And I remember you were talking about uh, this film uh, when we first met. Tell me a little bit about the journey that you've gone on to uh, to get to where you've got to now. Well, about five years ago, um, we made a short film, Perfect Strangers, which was of a, a similar story. It was a short film version of Lost at Christmas. And it was done just as a test case to see what we could do with the genre work in Scotland and just to, something to show to, you know, to investors and distributors towards what we want, what our end goal is. And the film really picked up and it ended up going to a bunch of film festivals, including Cannes. Um, it got nominated for BAFTA. It ended up getting distributed uh, on an American channel called Shorts TV, which, and that's been going for the last three years and it's just been renewed for yet another three years. So when we were looking to do a feature film, we knew we had a certain amount of time, a certain amount of money to do something. And I thought um, after the reception of this film, the best option for us was to take that story and extend it and uh, develop it further into a fully fledged feature film. Because people, whenever they, they were watching it, they would come out saying, I think that's got legs. I want to know more about these characters. So we expanded the characters, expanded the world and just turned it into a feel-good festive flick. Well, it looks absolutely amazing. I've been looking at the trailers and all the other things that you've got available on social media. So listeners, do type in Lost at Christmas into your search engine and you'll find all sorts of things on Facebook and all sorts of other uh, places too. So who who wrote the film? Who Who kind of put the thought and the story together? Well, it's written by... Myself and my co-writer Claire Shepherd, we both did wrote the short film together. Wow. Uh, so it was, it was, it just made perfect sense to you know we already know the the world. So just to kind of get down into figuring out the details and uh, having the opportunity to expand on the ideas that we set up in the short film was um, was quite it was quite enjoyable to do. So it was quite quite a fun writing process. I was, it was quite a daunting one mm. until you kind of you know pick up the pen or or start typing away at the keyboard you kind of you feel like you're not prepared and you don't have a clue what you're doing when in fact you actually know you know it inside out and it's just a matter of applying yourself so once the film script is written that's not the end is it that's the very beginning of the journey that you have to go on <laughs> oh yeah so it is a very long journey um it was it was quite an interesting thing because we had gone out to Los Angeles in 2018 uh, with our previous short film called Sundown to a festival called oh, Holy Show. Oh, yes, I think I saw that. That's great. That one. Hmm. Uh, oh, I love it. It's my, it's, it's so, it was like everything worked. Everything you know that we usually, whenever you mm. make a film, you have you, you never get 100. percent You get you can get close to it, or you don't get anywhere near it. But um, on that occasion, it was the first time ever where we had just. Everything worked. The performances worked, the script worked, the mm. location worked, the, the cinematography worked, the music, everything was perfect. So we'd gone out to this festival and 
our eyes were just opened by the way that the Americans um, handle independent film. It's encouraged, it's supported, it is, it is a multi-million dollar business. And I'm not talking about the big studio films, I'm talking about small, low-budget films that can be made from anything from, you know, £5,000 up to up to a million pounds. So, and my eyes were just uh, opened by this. And they just said, don't sit around waiting for the millions. Go out there, f- find out, figure out what you've got, what you can achieve and make something to that, to those requirements. Mm-hmm. So we came back buzzing, uh, full of ideas. We just soaked up everything. And we just went on this journey and figured out, okay, we know we can raise a certain amount of money. Let's figure out how we can do that. What can we do? We've got, we figured out we could film for two weeks with a with a full crew and a decent cast number and with limited locations. So we kind of tailored the film around what we knew we could do, which was, very, although it was very much around the short film, it still allowed us to expand it and to make it make it a lot grander. So where were you then? So where so where was the uh, the, the film? Like, where was it shot? It was shot primarily in Glencoe in the Scottish Islands. Oh, lovely! It's uh, I love that part of Scotland. I've I've shot a couple of things there in the past, and it just has everything you want. It just looks so cinematic. It looks dramatic. It looks romantic. It really is a uh, is a location for. The location that can fit any genre that you wish to tell your story. It's hard to go wrong with Scotland, isn't it? That's for sure. Uh, whereabouts is it in, if, if, you, if you're looking at the Scottish map? Um, it's about 80 miles from Glasgow, okay. north, north of Glasgow. So it's, um, okay. it's kind of on the west coast. Nice, nice. And how long did it take to, to film? It, yeah, it took us two weeks. It was uh, two, yeah, I think it was, oh, let's see, yeah. See, that's pretty 12, good. 12 days, 12 That's days. That's pretty good going, isn't it? You must have been working them hard. Yeah. Was bit, <laughs> <laughs> working myself very hard as well. It was, it was just one of those things that you arrive and you just surrender yourself to, okay, here we go, and your life is dictated by the day-to-day schedule and the page count that you must get through on sure. that day yeah. sure. otherwise you're screwed yeah and it must be re- like really difficult to get out of film mode right once you're well into filming and you know i mean what's the process you know do, do you once you wrap for the day you know do you are you just constantly thinking about you know how it went thinking about the day ahead do you just want to get back out there and and, and do some more takes what's what's the process kind of off camera if you like well for me, you would go through the full sort of 10, 12 hour day of, of shooting and then you would stop and then you would very quickly um, try and eat something. Um, <laughs> and, and at that point, your production team are then telling you, I, I come, have to come and report on other things that are going on towards what's happening tomorrow and the day after that. Um, and then you have to try at some point and have a look at what you've shot that day but then you're immediately looking at preparing what you've got to do tomorrow. Yeah. And But the, your brain doesn't switch off. You're no. pretty much running on adrenaline the entire time. So you sleep for a few hours and you get back up. It's not through uh, not having the time to sleep, but it, it was almost like there'd be no point sleeping. You, yeah. you, your, your brain and the adrenaline in your body would only allow you to sleep for a minimal amount of time. Well, I mean, look, the the film shots and the locations I've seen in the trailers look absolutely amazing. But I mean, my goodness, the cast! Tell me who you've got uh, starring in the film, and, and and how you managed to put the the cast and crew together. Well, I was incredibly fortunate to have two very good actors who are also very good friends, Natalie Clark and Kenny Boyle, who have been with me through thick and thin for a great number of years. Um, so I knew I had them in the lead roles and I could trust them. And then to surround these two actors, um, I just somehow get incredibly lucky. Just over the years through the various sort of mm. Doctor Who involvement and whatnot, I've got to know various different actors. I've got to know Fraser Hines. I've got to know Sylvester McCoy, Claire Grogan, Sanjeev Kohli. Uh, just just by being uh, being around and the Scottish film scene and just you meet you, you meet people you know you you, you meet sure. and you either click or you don't and uh, I've been very fortunate to uh, meet a lot of very very talented people uh, including our director of photography as well so 
it just happened to be a lot of people that were kind of around in my periphery that were you're kind of waiting for the right moment to kind of reach out and say let's do something now and usually you end up with a couple of folk but on this occasion it was just perfect to have this this incredible group come together yeah, absolutely brilliant now you know cinemas are it looks like they're going to be back in action very very soon uh you had your premiere there very recently uh, how did how did all that go how was that for you yeah it, obviously it was different to what you thought uh, at the start of the year what you were planning for with the the red carpet and the, sure. the showbiz nature of it so obviously you know the world of covid had a bit of a implication on on those plans so it was although it was quite a sort of um minimalist kind of event it actually ended up um it was actually quite scary because we we went to what was supposed to be our premiere screening uh which ended up being myself and two of the actors going to the first public screening so usually you would go to a premiere where everyone in the room is people involved in the film or connected to the people in the film in some way yeah um but no, on this occasion, it was uh, the paying public who had decided they wanted to see this film, bought their tickets, turned up, and uh, somehow didn't notice that the three of us were sort of cowering in fear <laughs> at the back. <laughs> well, we've had a look at um, some of the uh, the um, uh, footage and behind-the-scenes coverage uh, that you've uh, posted out there. Uh, and also we've had a look at the uh, Lost at Christmas uh, website. Tell you what, it, it looks like a really great happy feel good movie but my goodness it looks like you had a lot of fun behind the scenes was it a happy set it was it was a very happy set and we worked very very hard to make it as relaxed uh, uh, for people as possible because you are there under uh, really sort of tight conditions you're there you have a lot to do there's a lot of pressure that comes with independent filmmaking uh, at this level and the best thing you can do is just try and keep people happy and try and surround yourself with the most talented and friendliest people around. Because the minute you end up with uh, people who are not uh, who who can be grumpy, that's when that, that's when you can bring the, the the whole set down. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's really about you. And the thing is, you start off and you've got all these great characters who are great for their comedy. They're, they they know they know what it's like. They, they spend. They don't get paid to act; they get paid to wait. Are you sure? So, and these guys are great at this. So Sylvester, Claire, Fraser, Sanjeev—they've—they've they, they've been around the block. So they're all, always get stories. They're always keeping it light, and they kind of know that's that's the gig. Uh, and it's great and it just it just made it a really happy set the whole time so uh it's available tomorrow uh in uh in the main isn't it you can download it from amazon is it yep so tomorrow it goes out on digital and let's see if i can get this right it goes out on <laughs> itunes amazon sky store virgin media rakuten and chili Oh, Google Play as well. Google Play, don't forget that. Oh, well, that is brilliant. Well, I'm definitely going to be downloading it first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, I have been getting my children extremely overexcited about this movie, as well as myself and my friends. Uh, and so uh, I'm really looking forward. I, I think tomorrow night I'm going to have to watch it. And let's face it, you know, we need a, a, a decent new Christmas movie because there's only yeah. so much you can watch Notting Hill and uh, what's that other one? <laughs> You know, what's that? Love actually. Love actually. There you go. <laughs> oh well, there is a place for the staple Christmas films every single year. Uh, my wife and my stepson and I always sit around and watch uh, some of the classics. And Love Actually, Muppet Christmas Carol, Die Hard, they're all in there. <laughs> Home Alone. Home Alone. Uh, yeah, oh, of but there's, there's always room for the the quirky new film, or you know, the the, the kind of the black sheep of the family. So uh, yeah, absolutely. So lots of Christmas would really. Definitely fill that uh, stocking filler. Great. Right, so it's out at cinemas uh, today in Selector Cinemas. Also, you guys, there are plenty of uh, places for you to be able to access uh, the film. And obviously, we've been talking about the acting, the locations and the story, but we haven't talked about the sound. Tell us about the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Um, so I work with a composer called Stephen Wright uh, and his uh, business partner, Nigel Dunn. Uh, we did uh, Sundown together, and Stephen wrote this lush, cinematic, symphonic score, which was just astounding. And I've never heard anything quite like it on a on a low budget film. Uh, so we came to this knowing we had a a very particular challenge in mind, and we, you know, pushed the boat out to try and come up with this sort of 
classic old fashioned cinematic score. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we had quite a lot of um, live music requirements in the film. So oh. Stephen and Nigel were required to kind of write a couple of tunes, uh, as well as the other sort of up and coming Scottish bands that also contributed some music to the film. Uh, but they uh, wrote uh, two specific tracks that are hugely uh, important to the film. And will you be making the uh, the, the playlist available on, on things like Spotify as well? Are you going to release the soundtrack? Well, the inter- yes, we we had thought in the back of our minds we would do it. Um, and a very strange thing happened this week. The, uh, our distributors, Blue, fin- uh, Blue Finch Films, um, who are great, uh, who are handling all the, the, the digital release ahead of tomorrow, um, got in touch at the start of the week and says, by the way, just to let you know that you're currently pre-selling on Amazon in the top 10. <laughs> Oh my uh, goodness! Was, my mind was blown. As I, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, uh, so and it's and uh, it's remained there all week, and it's been incredible. And because of that, I kind of called up the Stephen and Nigel and said, "Right, uh, I think we kind of need to push this soundtrack out now. I know. We're, mm-hmm. are, are we ready? Can we do it?" Uh, and we had a deadline of uh, the deadline was Friday if we wanted to get it out on time. So <laughs> we through somehow. Going back to those very long <laughs> days on set, we somehow managed to kind of put a shift in and, and get it sorted out. So it should be coming out on iTunes around and so, and various other platforms, you know, where all good music is bought uh, around sure. the 11th of December. Brilliant. That well, well amazing. done. Well done, you, and well done to the team as well. It sounds uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, can't wait to see it. Can't wait to hear it. Sunday Night Live with Dan and Alex.